Hey, Keel, hello. Welcome. We are here for another episode of The Fly Report with Nikhil Goel, the Chief Commercial Officer at Archer Aviation. We're so spiked, psyched to speak to you. Thank you to our Spart sponsor, JetLinks, and their management and card program. Nikhil, if we could get right into it, we're so psyched to finally be able to talk to you, as I said. Um, with last week's announcement about Archer Defense and the partnership with Anduril, and additional capital raise. Could we start talking a little bit about that and what it will mean for Archer and the business going forward? Yeah, look, um, super exciting last few weeks for the company. Um, you know, last week we announced an exclusive partnership with Anduril, uh, and the goal there was really to advance the next generation of military aircraft. And, and you know, our first product there will be a vertical lift hybrid propulsion aircraft for military applications. So think, you know, a midnight like vehicle. Um, and then on the commercial side, you know, we remain pretty heads down on focused on launch next year. Um, and so our goal is to launch in the UAE by the end of next year commercially for passengers. And then on the defense side, you know, the engineering work's already begun. Uh, and then our goal is to have a fully integrated product, you know, much faster than sort of uh, the traditional defense players. Awesome. And when you say much faster, do you any specifics around that? Like what kind of speeds are, are we looking at for the initial vehicles? Yeah, look, we, we haven't said anything publicly. You know, what we're focused on is there is a very, very big opportunity here. Um, right. You know, look at sort of innovation in the military vertical lift category. There, frankly, has not been much over the last several years. Okay. And so this partnership, is, is, it's basically an opportunity to revolutionize the category. Um, and then we can together bring in the latest and greatest technology um, from from the commercial side and bring that into the military side. It's awesome. I mean, I so I think our team went. We some of us had the opportunity to see Midnight at the Dubai Air Show. I yeah. have yet to see it in person, but I'm really looking forward to my to my first hopeful Anytime. visit to Archer. Thank you. And, but you know, when what can in the, the UAE and, the, and beyond, what can we expect once midnight launches? We saw today um, that, you know, that you guys plan to be producing two of these aircraft a month, right? On uh, site at the new facility. What is that going to mean for the world? Yeah, well, look, just this morning, you know, we announced that we've completed construction um, on our mass manufacturing plant in Georgia. Um, that plant, you know, in its first phase has the capacity to produce up to 650 aircraft a year. And wow. so we are, we are definitely targeting a very large global market. And to match that, you know, we've got over $6.2 billion of orders from all over the world. Uh, the UAE is likely where we'll launch first. And so we've got a very strong partnership with Abu Dhabi in particular, okay. um, where you know we're working with the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, we've got multiple sovereign funds in the country that have invested in us: Mubadala, uh, and then International Holding Company, which is um, you know His Highness Sheikh Tanoon's fund. And so we've got government support, we've got royal family support. We're working with multiple sort of private entities across the the country, um, and then the GCA, who's the regulator there. So we'll we'll get we'll our goal is to launch by the end of next year. And then outside of the UAE, we've got partnerships in India, Japan, Korea, and then here in the United States, we're working with both United Airlines and Southwest. We've uh, publicly released networks in San Francisco and Los Angeles. So we've got a number of exciting things in the hopper. Awesome. And so, and you know, the midnight initially, a single charge, how, you know, if I want to go fly a midnight when this launches, if I go to San Francisco or when it comes to New yeah. York in time, how far how far did the did, will the initial vehicle be able to go um and about how long will that take from point a to z or a to b yeah well so we're really you know we've done a lot of work on understanding how people move in and around cities and what yep. we've found is that the vast majority of the I'll call it like the painful trips. And so I, I spent most of my career at Uber really looking at this sort of data. And what we found is that most of these kind of painful trips where people spend, you know, um, half an hour or more stuck in traffic are typically between 20 and 50 miles. That That's like the sweet spot of people's commutes or trips between home and airport. And so right. midnight was really built around that use case, you know, that those 20 to 50 mile urban routes 
um, that people are taking every day in the millions. And Right. so that's what we've really built the aircraft around. And, you know, there are longer trips than that too, that, that midnight will certainly serve, but, but that's the core use case. You're going to be those right. So me Yeah. getting home from the airport after a trip, after a business trip, when I'm completely exhausted, I could jump into an archer and into a midnight, an archer midnight, and get home probably in a fraction of the time than I would Exactly. ever work Exactly. without having to be stuck behind anyone in traffic. Got, okay. Right. Very Think, kind of. uh, So. yeah, think, you know, SFO airport to San Jose or LAX airport to, um, you know, to, to Burbank, Hollywood, or imagine uh, Newark to Manhattan. Those are Yep. the sort of routes that are really interesting to us. Awesome. And, you know, so let's say if I, I know that the FAA released some guidelines about learning how to fly EVTOLs, right? It was for sort of new vehicles. Yeah. I'm curious, we've actually been getting a lot of questions from people saying, I want to learn how to fly an electric plane. What is that going to look like? I mean, I, I have, I did my private pilot a while ago, but what is that going to look like in terms of, and what's the difference going to be if someone wanted to fly a midnight, even if someone were, were by a midnight just to fly back and forth to ferry him or herself back and forth the, from the airport, um, Once, you know, once the aircraft become is released for commercial use. Well, the, the beauty of these type of aircrafts, Jess, is that, um, you know, they're significantly more complicated than, say, a helicopter. Uh, and that's actually a good thing. I'll explain why. So in a helicopter, um, you know, you got one large rotor. And obviously, as a pilot, you, you know, you're controlling sort of the cyclic and the collective. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty cognitively difficult task. Um, our aircraft has 12 rotors. And so obviously, Right. it would possible for any human to to control sort of the 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 cyclic and the collective uh, you know across across every single one of these and so um because they're all independent um and and they they sort of conjunctively you know uh, determine sort of the vector at which you're flying and Right. so um it would be impossible for any human to do it and so that's all done by computers and so for the pilot the pilot's using what they call fly by wire meaning Um, you know, the pilot is simply commanding the, um, the aircraft via vector control Okay. and then the vector control is being then translated into how each of those 12 propellers is acting. And so the net result is an aircraft that's actually very simple to fly. Um, you know, it's funny, fixed wing pilots actually tend to do better than, than rotorcraft pilots, but both of them are, are like good bases. So Yeah. the way it'll start is, you know, we'll take existing fixed wing or rotorcraft pilots, and then they'll simply go get a type rating on, on midnight. And a lot of that, you know, with the SFAR that came out, um, that was the, the regulation by the FAA, that will allow much of that training to be done via simulator. And so, you know, we've got simulators that are headquarters. We'll bring in, you know, not just novices, but we'll, we'll bring in literal teenagers that will come in and start, um, start flying around. And within 10, 15, 20 minutes, they're zipping around their city. And so it's really cool to watch. And it's only indicative that over time, these aircraft are going to become simpler and simpler to fly. That's so cool. So this Yeah. is real, like, and I say it's this. It's really it sort of is like the Jetsons unfolding. It's crazy, right? So, and can I add another question? I'd love to understand. So a little bit more. The Midnight has a crazy low noise profile, right? So just I'm, you know, just as we're trying to understand how these are going to be flown and what it's going to be like when you hear a Midnight flying by your house, as in terms of you know. versus what you'd expect from a helicopter or a jet. What's that going to sound like? Is that a good one? Yeah. Well, I go back to a lot of the work we did at Uber, which, you know, it was not just studying how people move in and around cities, but it was also asking ourselves, like, why don't people fly in their cities more often? And, you know, the obvious bogey is helicopters. And so one of the first explorations I did almost 10 years ago was trying to understand why people don't um, more frequently fly in helicopters today. And there's a bunch of reasons, um, you know, safety is one of them, cost is one of them, but probably the biggest is actually noise where um, if you actually look at it, people used to fly in helicopters much more often, you know, San Francisco and New York as examples had literal helicopter airlines that would take people every 15 minutes to and from the airport. Um, but 
uh, the noise really got very um, uh, sort of onerous for societies. And so most cities in the world outside of New York and San Paolo have effectively banned most commercial helicopter flight uh, because of the noise. And, and people just simply will not tolerate um, helicopters landing on top of their buildings or, or next to their homes. And so um, when we sort of started this initiative at Uber, the whole uh, thesis was that with electric, with electric flight, you can be up to a hundred times quieter than a helicopter. And so um, I think now not just Archer, but many of the companies in the space have been able to effectively prove that. Um, and that's because instead of one large rotor, like a helicopter that breaks the sound barrier every time it spins, right. um, we're able to spin our rotors much more slowly. Um, and that's because, you know, the electric motor uh, enables sort of scale-free propulsion. And so because you can spin the rotor much more slowly, it generates an, you know, two orders of magnitude less noise when it's overhead. And so that's what really we think unlocks, um, you know, being able to launch these in, in meaningful numbers in urban environments. That changes the world because all exactly. this, it's not disturbing. It sounds like almost like it's comparable to a car going by. Right, to some extent, not, not even a car. I mean, it's it's not just the noise level; it's also the type of noise. You know, right. the helicopter noise is uh, that the pitch and frequency are pretty are not dissimilar to like the human voice, and so our ears are actually trained to pick it pick it up. Um, yep. And uh, so, therefore, it's like even more annoying than normal. Right. Whereas the the pitch and frequency that the beetles emit, uh, it's a lot higher. And so most of it attenuates in the atmosphere before actually reaching someone on the ground. Got it. So cool. So, and what else, what, what is next? What's, what are kind of the next miles, next milestones in the near future for Archer? Uh, well, look, um, you know, I think we've been uh, in a fortuitous position where the capital markets have really recognized what's happening here, which is science fiction is turning into science fact. And this is a very real technology that's on the brink of commercialization and so, you know, we've been lucky to, to, you know, just recently we announced that we raised an additional $430 million. And for the first time, some sort of real institutional investors came into that, uh, which gets us to about $2 billion raised in total. Uh, so from a capital perspective, we're in a, a strong position uh, with one of the strongest balance sheets in the industry. From a technology perspective, you know, we, we are flying frequently far ahead of schedule on our, um, on our test flight program. Um, and, you know, uh, upcoming, we've got piloted flight, we've got um, sort of starting to stand up our manufacturing facility now that construction's complete. And, you know, what you'll see next year is you'll see aircraft rolling off the line, you'll see us um, start to deploy those aircraft um, in urban environments. Yeah. Uh, and then the goal is to, you know, have that first commercial flight by the end of next year uh, in the UAE. That's awesome. So cool. It's so exciting. Nikhil, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I'm looking forward to coming to the facility. <laughs> Anytime. We'd love to have you. Awesome. Thank you so much. At JetLinx, partnership means best in class service. From your personal concierge and local operations team who know you and get the details right every time. Make JetLinks your partner in personal aviation.